Yes, good afternoon, Your Honour. This is case number IT 95518 77.3 in the contempt case of Radislav Kurstic. Thank you. I am Judge Melville Baird, a judge of trial chamber three, and I have been designated to hear this initial appearance of Mr. Kurstic. I would like Councillor Perrin for Mr. Kurstic to now introduce himself. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I am Tomislav Višnić, representing General Radislav Krstić in these proceedings. Thank you very much indeed. For the record, I know that the Chamber has decided to prosecute this matter itself, pursuant to Rule 77D2. Now then, Ms. Krstić, are you able to hear me in a language that you understand? Yes, Your Honor, I can hear you and understand you. Receiving the interpretation in your own language. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. I must now go through certain formalities. I will first ask you to state your full name and date and place of birth for the record. Yes, I'm Radislav Krstic. I'm Radislav Krstic. I was born on the 15th of February 1948 in Vlasenica, the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I would like to check that you have received a copy of the order in lieu of indictment dated March 27, 2013 in your own language and that you have understood its content. Yes, I did receive it in my language and I have understood the substance of the case. You are represented here today by Mr. Vishnich. Are you satisfied with your representation here today? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Now then, Mr. Kerstich, you are charged with one count of contempt for having refused to comply with the Chamber's subpoena of October 23, 2012 and the addendum to the subpoena dated 7th November 2012. The Chamber, having found that there were no medical reasons which amounted to good cause for you not to comply with the subpoena, held that there was sufficient reason to believe that you knowingly and willfully interfered with the administration of justice and therefore may be in contempt of the tribunal. Well, at this stage, I would ask whether it is still your position today that you are not willing to testify in the Karadich proceedings. Now, if you would prefer, we can go in private session so that the public will not hear will not be able to hear what you say. For medical reasons, health reasons exclusively, I am not able to testify in the case of Mr. Karadzic before this tribunal. Thank you. Now then, you are entitled to have the order in lieu of indictment read out to you in court today. But you may choose to dispense with that. Now, do you wish it to be read now, or do you waive that right? Your Honor, 
It is up to you to decide. I have read the order in lieu of indictment, studied it. I have understood it completely. So as far as I'm concerned, there is no need for it to be read again. So in effect, you have waived that right? In effect? The order is yes. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Now, pursuant to Rule 62A3 of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence, you can enter a plea to the charge of contempt set out in the order in lieu of indictment today, if you so choose, or you can decide to postpone your plea for a period of up to 10 days in accordance with Rule 77E. Now, did you discuss this with your counsel? I did not discuss this particular matter with my counsel. Would Mr. Vistich? Justice Sude. Your Honor, I think that this refers only to the deadline, at least as far as I understood from um, my conversation with the General, he's prepared to plead today. All right, well, um, let me, let, let, let me get it from him. But perhaps we can ask him again. Indeed, indeed. Pursuant to Rule 62A3 of our Rules of Procedure, you can enter a plea to the charge of contempt set out in the order in lieu of indictment today, or if you so, if you so choose, or you can decide to postpone your plea up to, up to a period of 10 days in accordance with Rule 77E. Now then, do you understand this? And how do you wish... I do understand. How do you wish to proceed? Yes, I understand. Um, I would like to plead today. Mr. Kerstich, rise please. You are charged with contempt of court under Rule 77A1 of the Tribunal's Rules of Procedure and Evidence. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. You may sit down. Thank you. In light of the nature of the charge, against you and all the circumstances, the Chamber would like to have this matter resolved as quickly as possible. Given your plea, this means setting a date for the trial. At the end of all the evidence, the Chamber will issue its judgment. Now, at the trial, you would be entitled to call witnesses and you may choose to testify yourself. This is for you to discuss with your counsel. I would therefore like to ask you through your counsel how long you consider you will need to prepare for this trial. Your Honor, without going into too much detail, I believe that we will be ready in 30 or 35 days. We need to obtain some documents and taking into account the translation and everything. I think we're talking about a period of 30, 35 to 40 days to be ready. There's no question of uh, um, a figure below that at all? If we obtain the documents, we are clear about what we need to obtain, but there are two ways to proceed. Perhaps we can shorten the 
um, trial time, which is why we would uh, prefer to perhaps get written evidence rather than calling a live witness. The second path would be take, uh, obtaining documents from a foreign country. So if we embark on that right now, it's possible that we would obtain that without the use of Rule 54, which would be a direct request for documents. We're talking about a transcript of a trial, so we're hoping to get this as soon as possible. However, I still have not any kind of date by which we would be able to obtain that. So this is why I set the um, period of 30 to 40 days. If we obtain the documents within the next two weeks, I can inform you about that. And then you um, could proceed to issue an order setting the date for the trial, if things should happen that way. The, the whole question of, of your, your defense is entirely um, in your hands. Now, as this is a contempt case, I do not believe that there might be issues of disclosure or that these proceedings should be prolonged unnecessarily. Am I right? No, no. Thank, thank no, you. No, no, Your Honor. Any preliminary motions, you are ordered to do so within 10 days from today in accordance with Rule 77E. Now, once these deadlines have passed, the Chamber will consider the court schedule and set a date for trial <clears throat> as soon as possible thereafter. Thank you. Now, Mr. Kerstich, I am aware that you have certain medical conditions, and I wish to ask you whether your medical condition is being adequately provided for in the United Nations Detention Unit and whether you have any other concerns with respect to the detention unit. Should you wish to mention any private details concerning your medical situation, we can, of course, go into private session so that those, deca those details remain confidential. Your Honor, I have nothing to say regarding my status and also my treatment by the um, medical staff in the detention unit. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Mr. Kerstich, and indeed um, you, Mr. Kerstich, do you have any other matter which you wish to raise at this time? No, Your Honor, not at this time, other than wanting to say that I'm going to inform you in writing about our endeavors to obtain these documents for purposes of planning the beginning of the trial. Very much indeed. All right. This being the case, um, if there's nothing further to be, to be raised, uh, the hearing is now adjourned. All right, we will be.